I had gone to the court to get divorced and I came back and me and my ex-wife <laughs> wanted to have a nice meal and then like uh, they saw me and they took pictures so I had the court file on my ID and we were okay fine beat my mom or dad in a situation I, I, maybe I'm hurt myself badly or something I look at them and if I see panic and fear in their face now I'm far unfortunately that's everybody measures how the worth of a film with how much money it's making incredible pressure incredible pressure bowel busting pressure can you verify whether sanjay leela bhansali is the tyrant he is made out to be a lot of things we hear about him are uh, true he gets angry he throws things around you know he breaks yeah. stuff like you know ipads and phones and laptops oh, wow. and mic did you figure out the chemistry between ranveer and dipika while you were on the sets of uh, ramleela during the second schedule when we were in udaipur yes yeah. uh, in the beginning no i like them both so i wish yeah. them well stay together guys Hi Gulshan. Hello. Thank you for coming to our apartment. Thank you for having me at All About Eve. <laughs> Thank you for the promotion as well. <laughs> well, that's a, the curious name. How did the, how did you come up with the name? Let me ask, start by asking Why you some not? questions. Why uh, not? This was actually my dad's uh, idea. Really? Like the idea was mine, but I was just wondering what do we call it, well, and he it, said All About Eve. Isn't isn't it like a, a movie? A movie. Yeah. So you, is it your dad's favorite movie or something? It's not, but I think it stayed with him. Mm. and he kind of remembered it and i think when i was trying to tell him that you know i want to build a platform that does content for women and i want it to be progressive ah. and inclusive and then he kind so of So that makes sense that's where the Yeah uh, and then it stuck and then i said oh, it's a cute name also i have this thing where i don't know if it's a superstition but now i believe that everything that starts with a is lucky for me uh uh-huh. because my surname is anand my company is ats so then i was like all about e was mm. it's a vibe all about it with a like yeah. how the k thing was a, is still a thing with uh, in 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 our industry yeah know? with karan jor but even he stopped now no 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 i was talking about all the uh, tv soaps oh yeah ekta kapoor and karan jor had this thing yeah they have this thing you know yeah thing. but i think now they've given up on i don't it. know i'm just like I'm, i'm not really following it but it was a huge thing it like was. you know of some time back when it started it was like everything would begin with k yeah and there was some people had all kinds of stories as to why that is is numerology it's superstition and then you know people have their own things but if it works for you it's good it makes you feel good yeah i mean it's not harming anybody yeah like you know like by having this thing that you know i like things that start with a It, if it creates a positive feeling inside you that's good yeah then uh, as long as it's not harming anybody including yourself then it's totally fine like hunter had 3 hours at 3 hours <laughs> i have no idea why i'm presuming it had to do something with numerology maybe i don't know i don't know if uh, shemaru had some uh, numerology ideas or something like that uh, uh, people from phantom definitely didn't and uh, the people who made the film ashwardhan and gang and they don't really hmm. uh, i'm not really sure if it's numerology though or if it's just like it sounds not even you say hunter hmm it could be that also yeah possibly. or it could be representative of the three main characters who are women hmm because there are three main female characters in it correct one played by radhika one played by veera saxena and one sai tamankar so it could be representative of that i don't know but i never actually thought of the um numerology angle you know until you mentioned it <laughs> but it could be that as well yeah well we'll only find out once you ask them i just want to put an uh, maybe i should put like an s or a, or a silent letter in my in my uh, in your spelling name? you know just for kicks and this when people ask me why like yes my name is g u l x h a n but the x is silent hmm why not maybe it even works but it's still gulshan but then yeah. you just have to write x but how does that translate to other languages I have no idea. Like Hindi it's clearly. Like in Hindi, I will write my name. So, now X is coming. Yeah. Now, if we write in Hindi, then it works. How does it work? No, it doesn't. Numerology is English. That's valid. I think. So, English numerology is valid for English. I mean, numerology is English for English. Yeah. So, in Hindi and other languages, in India, it will be different from the Hindi and other languages. Yeah. In India, it will be different from the Hindi and other languages. Yeah. In India, it will be different from the Hindi and other languages. Yeah. In India, it will be different from the Hindi and other languages. Yeah. In India, it will be different from the Hindi and other very little knowledge about numerology or any i don't have any expertise on this hmm. well that's fine you have expertise on acting i and, think yeah a fair, fair amount of that we are fans <laughs> of that i have to say i loved watching you in the heart thank you it was such a brilliantly written series i think and i kid you not i watched it in one go 8 hours on a flight 
I downloaded on the entire flight. season on a flight, Delhi to London. I saw the yeah, in- that's about eight hours. Yeah, so. I saw the entire show, and I was just so flawed, of course, by everyone's performance and yours particularly. Thank you. Thank and I just loved how the character was written, and I thought I will start by discussing with you. You know, so many nuances that I observed, um, and very well. Sort of, they were very dealt with. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, a lot of sensitivity. For example, you know your character. He is very fascinated, or almost enamored, or respects Sonakshi Sinha's character yeah. a lot. Yes. You know, he wants to imbibe those values in his daughter, mm. and of course, he thinks of her as well. Mm. You know, when he's with his wife, mm. but at least yet, I don't know season two may mm. kya mm. But he's not acted on it. You know, the he is the perfect good guy. In he's my not opinion. perfect, but he's a good guy. Yes, he's a good guy. I mean. Everybody is flawed and everybody has thoughts yeah. and I think not acting on them is what separates you yes, from yes, someone yes. who does not have a strong character. Yes, yes, yes. What was your experience like performing a role that was let's say written by a woman? You know because we have mm. this thing on our show that we either call great women yeah. or we call men that um, women would love. Okay. So what was that experience like of having played such a fine character written by the team that wrote it? A lot of my process is use of imagination. You know, I try and build the sense of who this character is in my mind, and then then I try it out physically. So having good text to start to interpret is really an advantage because when you read something and when it's well written and it has clarity, and it has nuance in it, and it has the potential to uh, to interpret it in very in creative ways, that always helps. And when you're working with people also who give you that thing, you know who allow you the space to be creative also uh, really helps. So I had an image of what Devilal was like and it usually starts with something very simple that you can just start with and it makes totally sense for the, uh, total sense for example that he's a good guy. Hmm. Why is he a good guy? So then I was like because he tries to do the right thing every time he need not necessarily succeed in doing that but he asks himself that, that question, what is the right thing to do? Hmm. And then if he can do it, he'll do it. He's not able to do it sometimes because, you know, other things get in the way and things like that. So I think that was the foundation through which uh, I started building the illusion of like, you know, uh, uh, Devi Lal and some of the mannerisms were borrowed from my dad also, the way he sits and things like that. I sort of lent, lent into it as like, you know, I do sit a little bit like my dad, you know, so I'll sit like that and he has that thing. My dad doesn't sit like that, but then I came up with those things and all that. And this whole relationship between the two of them is also in a way very simple to understand. You start with what is really obvious that Devi Lal is in a marriage because his mother wanted him to get married. He's not necessarily married. In fact, he's not at all married to a woman who he actually finds interesting Hmm. because He's interested in many other things. His mind has been opened a lot more. He's a lot more open-minded than probably men of his same age and same society. He feels that he shouldn't restrict his daughter. And he genuinely feels that. He is stimulated mentally and intellectually also by somebody like Anjali, uh, Anjali Bharti because she has a certain fire that burns in her. And he he wants to support that, and it excites him also. And he sees the the uh, he also understands her background, where she comes from, and in his own way, he tries to be give her her space. Like yes, go uh, and do your thing, and you know, and be this brilliant op- officer that 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 you want to be. Yeah. There is also a subconscious attraction, yeah. a sexual attraction between them, that yeah. energy between them, which either of them don't realize. Yeah. He, it comes to him as a surprise while he's with his wife. They're making love. They're not really making love. They're just in the act of having sex. Yeah. And he suddenly thinks of her. Yeah. You know, and that scares him. Yeah. And it happens sometimes, like, you know, that somebody, which is when I think he realizes how much he likes her. Yeah. The fact that he doesn't act upon it is also because he's a decent man. Yeah. He's a married man. He's a loyal husband. Yeah. He may not really be, have been the best marriage, but he, he knows that it's a loyalty is a gift that he's given to his wife, at least in season one. <laughs> so he doesn't really act. In fact, he gets really conscious because sometimes he lets it out, you know, as to how much how much he really likes 
Anjali. Almost to her as well in the last yes. episode, right? Yeah. So, which is when I think she also is like, mm, I think you know yeah. he likes me a lot. How much she doesn't know yet, yeah. but she definitely he kind of slips slips yeah. out. That's there. Yeah. So all of these things, these layers were there, and we try to sort of play them out and and keep it simple at the same time. Wherever there was chance to sort of uh, for these nuances to come out in the performances, we would highlight them, and. Um, that's basically what it was and sometimes when you then you take your ideas or your interpretation of it and then when that is that bounces off or that kind of uh, uh, when you riff with your co-actor and then more layers sort of uh, you know come from that so this was the basic process it was a very enjoyable and creative process also for me particularly to sort of create this the illusion of being devi lal which was kind of constructed part imagination part my dad of course there's always parts of yourself hmm. uh, in in such things also so this was the basic idea through which we did that all the things that you pointed out was already there in the writing hmm. i just needed to play that out yeah and I, there was I, i mean it wasn't confusing at all it was very apparent when we were reading um and he does see that he understands the concern that his wife has for her daughter but at the same time he also sees it as a cage yeah around her daughter yeah that could make her like her mom yeah and that's not what he respects yeah. because he and respects so, anjali and if you see somebody pointed this out actually while filming it i didn't realize it myself when we have that fight between me and my my wife the daughter is behind the grill that symbolic of a cage hmm oh i didn't yeah. look at it like that i didn't that. realize it too this is the this is a, and it was reema's episode so reema should hear so yeah uh, that's just, a duo that i just yeah, love yeah. i think everything that reema kakti does zoya akhtar does excel does or tiger baby does is just yeah they're, it's they're brilliant. yeah they're brilliant people to work with they're intelligent they're lovely to get along i mean generally sit and chat and uh, they're fun people also and then uh, they are capable of writing such uh in nuanced you know text that's that's so much fun to sort of like you know interpret and then uh, and to sort of use your creativity and then you infuse that into the writing and uh, overall it was a really great really <laughs> long experience. story short i'm just saying it was a really fun experience yeah. it was really fun and i really enjoyed playing a good guy you know yeah, yeah and i really <laughs> enjoyed watching you play that guy and then i followed you on instagram and the impression that of course i had you know how we tend to as the audience of course it's a commentary on how well you've played that part right because we start to think oh this is how this person must be yeah right like serious and somber yeah, and you yeah, know yeah. like collected and and then i went to your instagram and then i was just so surprised i was like oh my god like yeah i'm like mm. <laughs> <laughs> i was like you know the clothes the fashion yeah, the yeah, vibe is so it's different it's and um I, i i thought it was really cool and this is why acting is fun you know you can just go ahead and for some time be absolutely somebody else and then just like come out of it yeah. <laughs> and be yourself please tell us a little bit about your fashion sense that we really well, admire it's called versova ka versace <laughs> yeah why it does your bio say versova ka versace because somebody i know saurabh is a graphic designer and he saw an outfit of mine uh, a picture i had put up and then he commented versova ka versace and i live in versova in hmm. mumbai so hmm. and it's a kind of a flashy style and versace is generally really yeah. opulent fashion flashy that bit gaudy but also cool yeah 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 So, like in the eighties and nineties, it was a bit gaudy, but uh, mm. but yeah, uh, the Gen Z style is something yeah, so very like fascinating. Yeah, so like that. So I think by. I went to fashion school. I went to NIFT. Yeah. I'm not I'm not an educated actor actor actually, but I'm an educated designer. I worked for nearly eight years in the fashion business. I did all sorts of stuff, and then I retired myself because I wanted to have a sort of a blinders approach to my acting career. Like you know, I don't want to be distracted with anything else. and i also want don't want people to be confused my perception should be clear yeah that he is an actor nothing else like when people see me like this is an actor whether i have work or no work they should just be able to categorize me as an actor that's the impression that they'll have if i do other things that kind of convolutes this projection that i may have yeah i mean this was the idea that i have i don't know this is not an exact science it's just my idea of how psychologically it could probably play to my advantage yeah 
so i retired myself from design but i also realized that i really like clothes you know yeah uh, i miss making them but i really like clothes and shoes and uh, and jewelry and things like that, and dressing up and all that and i can change my mind i uh, i mean i it's it's a fun process but it can be an excruciating process also because i keep changing my mind so i change my outfits a lot like so i always overpack because i was like i don't want to like Same. end up like ah i don't think i want to wear this today yeah. it's like that Yeah I, so yeah I have nearly 400 pairs of shoes so there you go. No yeah. I know you beaten me there. Now, most women <laughs> I beat like women usually like if there is anything that I, <laughs> I beat women uh with about fashion is that the amount of like you know shoes I have sneakers mostly. Hmm. So I really enjoy myself and I want to express myself like my personality how I'm feeling right now you know I want to express that and this is my way of sort of not missing fashion that much. Yeah. By sort of indulging in it myself. So I've started collecting pieces, styling myself. Styling yourself is basically wearing your own clothes. Yeah. That's what it means. Yeah. So, so and then um, investing in like brands, like a lot of Indian brands. Like you're wearing Human. I have yeah. a lot of pieces from Human. They're quite cool. I have that. Yeah. Uh, uh, the Jaipur watch company. So I, I really I saw a, an Instagram video about them on Shark Tank. Yeah. I thought they were really beautiful. Very cool. and a uh, bit pricey but but yeah. it's okay you know that's okay yeah and they're definitely collectible so so i'm just slowly slowly sort of it's fun and i'm enjoying it and i don't think i've really gotten to a stage where i've like i've hit the peak yet yeah but then i've just started to sort of have my fun with it and um and rewear clothes also like many times because there are shirts and there are out pieces in my outfit that i really like and i end up wearing the same thing uh again and again this is also i think is a bit of I think there's a lot of pressure on actors to sort of look yeah. a certain way, so they like you know we can't wear the same clothes yeah, and things yeah. like that, and we unnecessarily suffer in our heads that oh what will people think? People think that we are not I don't know we're not doing well enough or we're wearing the same clothes and all that, and I feel that it's an unnecessary suffering. But normal everybody wears no, their clothes again. You can again. still look yeah as long as you're looking cool if you feel so if that's the point like if you want to make a good impression. that you're fashionable you're beautiful you're good looking you're trendy you can do that by repeating your pieces as well yeah so i have a lot of fun because sometimes like yeah i want to wear this shirt but how 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 will i wear it now with what will i wear it right now what what would be the pants or do i throw something what would be the jewelry that i'll wear it like how will i pair it with my shoes you know hmm. uh so sometimes is usually like i want to pair wear this pair of shoes i want to start from here yeah so it's like that and i think i'm the more i'm getting comfortable being myself i think the slight flamboyance that's there in my personality i'm actually a very shy introverted guy like when i was i'm not so much now but that's who i, I was hmm. and i think to a large extent that's what i am but there is a certain flamboyance and a fun liveliness to me which i think the uh, with with a little experience and age and a little you know in work on myself i'm getting more comfortable with it so i want that also to sort sort of show with my uh with my clothes with my sense of fashion we are not complaining but i actually wanted to ask you that you know as you made that shift as you said 8 years into yeah. you know uh, being in the fashion space how scary was it to say ke abhi stable income nahi aayega because i'm concentrating on being an actor yeah and i'm going to have to you know try out various things yeah. and i might fail Mm -hmm. and you know like that financial insecurity that yeah. so many people yeah. you know go through once they've yes. had stable careers so, yeah to okay, you start with nothing yeah. we have nothing to lose mm. but here you made a shift from you know yes, a well paying yes. career yes a career shift yeah, yeah. something How? something more stable i yeah sure i understand because i had established myself as a designer yeah i was freelancing i mean i had quit like most of the jobs i was in and i was freelancing i was doing quite well and i was making a lot of money uh so yeah that way it was I was very stable, and it was growing for me. And I had a reputation. I had very yeah. good clients. So to quit all of that, of course, one would imagine that it's scary. But you know, the thing is, once you find the courage to make up your mind, nothing matters. Mm. It's not scary anymore. Uh, when we haven't, I felt that when I hadn't made up my mind, I was like, I don't know, I don't know anything about acting. But then once I started learning about acting, I started to get better at it. That. then i i felt more confident that you know i have a skill set i have something to offer to people you know when they see they will be interested in me so that confidence was there and i was getting that validation with when i was doing shows when i was doing uh, theater 
people who I would think have, are knowledgeable people were giving me the right, the kind of uh, reactions that were very positive. So I knew that my work was getting better and it was good. That creates confidence. You know, small, you build up a collection of small successes. So that builds up your confidence. And then you find some inspiration in life. In my case, it was one of my colleagues who wanted to be a news camera person. Yeah. I used to work at this place called Wigan Inley College. I used to teach there. And he was my colleague. He was he used to teach computer applications and I used to teach design. Uh, we, we were colleagues and we would hang out. And he told me one day that he wanted to be a news camera person. I thought, what an odd, uh, you know, desire. Fine, okay, fine. Uh, who am I to like, you know, judge? Uh, all right. He had no idea how to do be a news camera person. So he learned how to do all of those things. And, and uh, he had a family. He had to earn money for the family. He had parents who were aging and all that and he had a lot of things that could go wrong because he was taking a serious risk in his life by completely giving up what he was doing and getting into a field where he has no idea about and he did it and he's a news camera person he's still a news camera person you know his admirable name is, yeah his name is Padmana Brau so I was like that was my inspiration hmm. I was like once I saw that like what's stopping you you don't have these risks yeah your parents don't depend my parents don't depend on me to run the household they're not saying that don't go and try. What's stopping me? So that's the only thing. So that was the inspiration that probably, or rather the kick up my backside mm. that I probably needed. There was no fear then. Yeah. So many of our shackles are anyway self-created. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, and because we are afraid. So once you find that courage and that inspiration, no? and here in this case, it was like, I worked on the craft. I was like, um, I should have something, I should be sound here, like, okay, if I don't have like a lot of money or like, you know, I'm the best looking, I have the best physique or something like that, but I must have something that's really good. So I worked on the craft and the eight years that I was in, in fashion, I was making clothes, I was also doing theatre. I worked with people who taught me a lot about the craft of acting in theatre and drama. I read a lot of books. I looked. I started looking at performances from a very academic point of view, performances that I liked, and I started to learn from that. That developed confidence that I have something that is good. So that really helps also overcome the fear. It's not really just talking myself out of the fear. Hmm. Like when you have something that you know that, yeah, I'm good at this. Yeah, I'm yeah. good. I can do this. So, Fair enough. so then that kind of helps uh, kind of... Uh, uh, quell the fear as well. Hmm. What drives you? Like what motivates you to wake up every morning? It's give it hundred percent. I love acting. It's fun. Like particular. I love cinema. I love. So being. it's just pure passion. Yeah, it is. It is. The rest of the, I, I, you know, money, fame, and things are very desirable, but they are incidental. Hmm. I mean, they are connected to this. So, uh, and I'm, and I'm, I'm, I'm happy. And I also noticed that people who find this fun usually do better yeah. at that like True. be it an artist or a potter or a carpenter or something like that when they really enjoy what they're doing they get better at it really much faster than people who probably don't enjoy it you can have all the talent but if you don't really enjoy what you're doing then you won't really improve so fortunately i really enjoy what i do i really it's really that's what gets me out of bed and gets me excited and i think that fire is still there I'm looking forward to what's coming ahead. Yeah, That's amazing. And I wanted to obviously ask you this one question, which I was uh, also particularly intrigued by, is that why do we not see you getting papped? <laughs> what is the story? And why do because paps we, yeah. not follow Gulchan around? Because we, I don't. Because uh, my publicists don't phone them and say that I'm taking a flight. But this is the real thing. Like paps have yeah. to be called. Yeah. And they have to be informed that I'm oh, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, everybody. I'm bursting the bubble, <laughs> but this, look, look at it. Let me change your perspective. Look at it in a different way. Find other ways to sort of, <laughs> you know, publish promote yourself, yourself. Promote yourself. Yeah. yeah, instead of saying I'm going to the airport, but yeah. it all. No, seems yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not like they're waiting outside or something like that. Or even sometimes randomly on the street, you can like I have been photographed. It was really funny because I got, I had gone to the court to get divorced and I came back and me and my ex-wife <laughs> wanted to have a nice meal and then like uh, split. So some people recognized me, uh, I mean the, uh, the photographers were on a bike, they usually on a bike, certain areas. They saw me and they took pictures. So I had the court file and I didn't get me. Okay, fine. Like you want to take some pictures. So there are those random moments when they do take, 
but these are not the ones that are doing the rounds like hmm. you know like going ahead or they're not pushed they're just like ha huh, we saw him we'll take it we'll see hmm. what happens it will be posted somewhere else that doesn't really get any mileage but the ones that really do like the airport looks or like if yeah. you're there somewhere they are they they are in on it like wo ghar ke bahar bhi hote hain itne logo yeah. ke to so as far as i understand i've been in the business for like 13 years now hmm. the best of my understanding uh they are informed Hmm. About the location, and you don't get to obviously engage. In I that. think yeah, I think we pretend to sort of uh, behave like oh we didn't know they were there. Yeah, like I yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm bursting this bubble for everybody. We sorry, love that the entire we, uh, community. That <laughs> we love the declaration. So we're going to get to the story because why are you asking me this question? Like, did you like? I'm curious. Like, why this particular question? I something, will ask you many interesting know, questions. I know, but what, something must have prompted you to ask me this question. I just curiosity, just hmm. curious. Ah, okay. I told you I I followed I your work for a while. I, I know I thought something that I said or did or something like that. Yeah, you know the last time I was papped, like I was going leaving for London and then uh, I tried to be funny and I think I came back from London and then man the security guard from my building is like uh, I was like I had brought some you know uh, the toffees for for them and I was giving it to them. ना लेकिन हाँ हमें पता था सर आप लंदन गए थे कैसे हमने फोटो देखा सर आप वो उसे सामान उठा के <laughs> मैं आपको चलो एक बहुत इंटरेस्टिंग एपिसोड बताती हूँ जो भी इस बर्सिंग ऑफ बबल बट आपके एडवांटेज में वर्क करेगा दैर आई एक्चुअली हैव फ्रेंड्स इन द रियल एस्टेट स्पेस हु आर लेट्स ए डिवेलपर्स इन बॉम्बे हु रिफ्यूज टू सेल अपार्टमेंट्स टू एक्टर्स बिकॉज ऑफ द मे हेम ऑफ द पैप्स दैट कम्स अलॉन्ग विद इट या जस्ट लाइक यू नो फॉर द अदर रेजिडेंट्स इट्स पेनफुल द एक्सपीरियंस it can be yeah, yeah. it can be see the because unke bhi bacche hain phir you know it's like kiski photo le rahe kuch safety nahi hai kabhi bhi bula rahe hain middle of the night haan, party ho raha hai ho sakta hai ha to wo nahi unne becha hi nahi usko bahut popular actor wo yeah generally people are bit skeptical with actors sometimes i think it's not that much like i've never really faced that kind of uh, Because you don't Racism, call the paps. Yeah. It's just no, the no, no, pap no, no. thing. Even with buildings and stuff like really? that. Really? Like, yeah. I don't know any of my friends who've not sold to actors because they're actors. I guess I don't have that reputation also of this like being this wild, um, or like you know controversies or something like that. So far, so I don't get mixed up in such things. So maybe that's why when I meet people in a residential complex when I'm moving in or something, they're like uh, they're probably okay with it. You know? Hmm. Ajay, we're going to get back, circle back to this story because I wanted to ask you that you've spoken about, of course, your relationship with your ex-wife and your divorce publicly yeah. in many yeah. sort of interviews, and I don't want to touch upon that. But I want to ask you, what do you think? Firstly, is there a perfect relationship? Yeah. Uh, and if there is, then what is your definition of a perfect relationship? Sure, there is a perfect relationship. A perfect relationship is in a. in accepting the fact that it's going to be imper- imperfect they have to keep working you know they say this the universe we are constantly in motion we are never at the same time uh, in the universe uh, at once everything is moving you know yeah. there's a theory i think a relationship is like that it's constantly moving and evolving and changing and um, just f- to understand let's just say the two people who are in that relationship must be willing to sort of move with each other and have that and and are willing to negotiate with each other constantly i think you you will create the the environment that's necessary to have a fulfilling relationship yeah. so from your experience what would you say has not worked in a this, what doesn't work in a relationship this thing i think like people like uh, when you when you're not able to com- like make this work uh, because one person can't make it work and particularly hmm. like you know in modern relations with people who live in cities um uh, one person can't make it work because it's only about like because it's not about like oh if you're not uh, married then what what will people say hmm. uh, we're not worried about such things anymore so if you want a relationship to work then it has to be that you have to be able to negotiate and talk to each other at all times and make adjustments and solve problems together give and receive feedback as well absolutely you have to be and many times our egos get in the way it's hmm. as simple as that hmm. the complications are because our egos get in the way Yeah. And uh, in my case I think I I'm an only child so I'm not very experienced with being with other people in the house you know. Hmm. My it was just my dad mom and myself. Yeah. And uh, so suddenly I am having to share everything with another person. I found that really difficult to handle. Yeah. I really I found that I I felt that I didn't have my space you know. But I I just couldn't figure out how to 
work around that and then kaliroy had her her own set of uh, problems so together also and also as individuals we needed to sort of figure out uh, a certain way and then the you know the, i i i say this often you know if our relationship was a tree then a branch was rotten and we had to cut that off that was the divorce so we could save the tree even if the tree is not fruit bearing it still gives shade you know so mm-hmm. that's where at that's where we are at right now it's still an enriching it's relationship very, yeah, there was yeah. a lot of love and you know uh, and well, there was something uh, there was a strong bond there was, that was there and i always consider her as my family as like you're my family you know we took some time we needed some time to sort of reset rethink realign and do things on our own uh, for a while uh, to get to a level and then uh, we are trying to make it work now yeah. that's where we are at yeah that's brilliant taking one day at a time not really thinking about like what will happen in the future because we know that things don't work it's okay we're mature enough to understand that we'll withdraw and we'll save the friendship we'll, yeah. we'll save the tree because that's the thing right there's this whole like i don't know if it's a misconception or the narrative is that exes can't be friends which i don't agree with i think they can Absolutely, even if they yeah. choose not to rework or retry you know on a relationship i think yeah. they can still be friends because yes, you've yes, loved yes. that person as an individual yes yes you need to take some time off sometimes because there's a lot of hurt and pain that you're dealing with yeah and in that that's you have to deal with them and sometimes you have to grieve the death of the relationship yeah If you ask me it was like losing it was like somebody died the end of a relationship when you there's in a heartbreak how does it feel it's like when you know that your relationship is over it's like somebody dying it's it the same pain it is heart wrenching yes yeah. it is that pain yeah. it's exactly like that so you have to grieve the death of that relationship you have to deal with the pain and hurt and then you possibly you are in a position where you are like okay now i don't have any of those things baggage i can look focus on all the good things that were there between us all the things that were uh, that you liked that were good yeah and so you know they, then you're able to nurture them also how did you deal with that pain by taking time yeah taking time and what did you do in that time i spent a lot of time just being by myself focusing on the pain going through if i if it made me cry i would just cry uh many times it got in the way of work also sometimes i had to sometimes cancel a few recordings or dubbings because i yeah. just couldn't i just couldn't really get out of bed you know i really course, appreciate the therapy, like talking to people i'm not going to like you know whole hype the whole concept of like you know having a therapist and counseling and all that but it's definitely useful try and do as much work possible as you by on your by yourself but after a point i think it's really useful if there are people to guide you yeah and show you the direction in my experience i do a lot of things myself but when i start talking to a good therapist they tell you things and i was like i would have never thought of that yeah it's a different uh, perspective yeah 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 because they're also detached they're not emotionally attached to you mm. you know they're detached so they look at it from 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 a sense that how can i help this person and then they tell you stuff like i, I have a, i have a thing like you know when i when i get really ha- angry with somebody when i get really angry i can say the meanest things you know because my ego takes over and it, takes the meanest things and uh, i knew it was the ego but i didn't know what exactly was triggering it so while i was talking to a therapist she said that you hurt back when you are hurt or when you feel hurt it's not that uh it's not important that uh, you know the hurt like whether you are actually hurt or should you be hurt or something you feel hurt by somebody that creates this that's the trigger something a behavior they did that didn't do or something they said that's when you hurt back that's when you can't control and you want to hurt them back 10 times yeah over by not physically but just just being mean you know yeah and i'm yeah i'm i admit to the fact that i can relentlessly go after somebody sometime for like a long time just trying to hurt them back because i think they hurt me yeah There's a really I would have never thought of that. Yeah. A, th- a therapist had to point me in that direction and I was like you so right. You know, once I realized that it helped me deal with this. So now I know when I'm hurt I'm like I know this is going to happen. So how can I change my perspective? Yeah. To sort of to be able to deal with this situation. Now I'm like I'm focusing okay I have to tell this person that this person hurt me rather yeah. than hurt them back and give them an opportunity to I don't know uh just 
quell the situation or apologize or i don't know just start a different kind of a conversation i read this really beautiful quote that said if you don't heal what hurt you you will continue to bleed on those who didn't cut you absolutely and i think absolutely yeah that's exactly what this is and i really appreciate you um saying that you know you cried or that a you lot. know you took yeah. therapy because i don't know again it's just conditioning that we believe that men don't cry or you know talking about mental health is just it makes you seem weak yeah. Yeah. you know uh and people who are in positions of power must come across as formidable yeah you know as though they can't be touched yeah it's not a weakness and you can there are different ways to overcome weakness you know if, if somebody is weak like somebody is physically very weak and somebody would say that go to the gym exercise and you build yeah that's a good way to get strong like eat like you know different food that so you deal with it right when you're weak so when you're mentally weak there are certain things that you can't deal with so if you keep suppressing it then it will get to a point where I don't know. You may decide to take your own life or something. Like you know, yeah. people do stupid things. Yeah, you could come back. People hurt people. Yeah. They pe people hurt. They pass it on. You know. Yeah, hurt people. Hurt yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. That stoic, like you know, will brave it through. It definitely gives courage to people. Uh, it, uh, sometimes people look to certain people to have that brave fa face. Like, beat my mum or dad in a, a situation. Or maybe I'm hurt myself badly or something. I look at them, and if I see panic and fear in their face, now I'm fucked. You know? Hmm. so they will even though it is quite serious or something they put up a brave face so it has its place yeah but at the same time you have to really get out a lot of stuff you know so this whole idea that men should not cry and we have to really like you know bulldoze through all the situation ends up uh, you end up with a lot of pent up frustration and all of that inside you and then it it gets to a point where you don't know what it is yeah you know as an actor you play so many diverse characters do you take them back home with you mm. and um if you do then what toll does that take on the mental health of an actor you know i was very fortunate that i i worked with certain people when i was in bangalore doing theater when i was learning the craft who told me that there is a line that you have to draw for yourself beyond that line is madness you can really go to the edge and ride that line but never cross it so that has always been part of my process that i shouldn't forget that this is acting and this is not i mean being truthful being in the moment is one thing that's a completely different thing but you should never lose your sense so much that you don't know who you are and what you're doing which is when the fun aspect of acting is gone you can't completely become somebody else and if people would say that you completely i completely transformed i forgot who i was either they're lying or they were crossing the line into madness hmm. so it helps me i know i'm making a judgment on other people here i'm sorry i uh, let me just say that what works for me is that having that line hmm. when i have that line i know i'm not going to cross it but what i'm interested in is really going to the edge of that Hmm. like riding that line but i know i never want to cross that line yeah. so those things don't come back home with me because you know i was watching this interview of ranbir singh and he was talking about how he was prepping for his role yeah. um as khilji yeah and you know he kind of went into this um sort of place where he was only eating red meat and he yeah. was you know he was kind of angry all the time just yeah. as a part of his preparation yeah would you i've worked with him i've seen him in cinema and ramlila also i think he's really, he really carries that that's his way i mean if i ever had the chance i'll try and talk him out of this process yeah that's what i was going to would you ever would, do that like, i know him and he sort of a friend i know him i've been to his wedding so i um he i mean we never really talk shop that way it's like we, there's a very warm uh, relationship that we have whenever we meet and it's usually very short but i filmed the film I, I did a movie with him so i've seen him go through this process it's really there he physicalizes this thing yeah but for me it's suffering like you know and then yeah when he and when he's talking about it yeah it's glamorizing that suffering mm. but it's still suffering mm. my perspective is like i'm not saying right or wrong yeah if it works for him that's the process and he is willing to uh, put himself through that then that's a choice that's his decision you know but for me it's like it's not doesn't seem like fun kyun karna hai it doesn't seem like fun hmm. you know suffering is not fun so if there are other ways where you can simulate that where it seems like it's real but it's still fun for you 
then that's why it's like the focus is on skill for me it's not really putting myself in certain situations yeah uh, actually to feel something like if i have to be drunk in a scene i don't want to drink alcohol if i want to be angry i've tried that it doesn't really work for me because it's again like i went on a certain diet where i cut out all carbs for a certain film and it was keeping me irritated most of the time <laughs> but i am also creating and i'm snappy at everybody it's not nice it's not fun people working around me are not having fun hmm. but it's a collaborative process right and i'm like no man i'm like i want to work with everybody all of us put together are making this so i just gave up on that idea really early on and then focused on this using my imagination and my skill to do so i don't know if ever i have the opportunity and anvil is willing to sort of have a chat with me i'll try and talk him out of this uh, this process Can you verify whether Sanjay Leela Bhansali is the tyrant he is made out to be? A lot of things we hear about him are uh, true. Okay. And For example, a lot of things like he has angry. He gets angry. He gets angry. He throws things around. You know, he breaks yeah. stuff like you know iPads and phones and laptops oh, wow. and mics and microphones and all that. And he screams at people. And then uh, let's just say that uh, he's good at swearing. Okay. He's pretty good at it. Yeah. <laughs> Surprisingly good. Did you get some of it? No. No. Not at all. Not okay. once. I think he liked me. Hmm. I can't think of any reason uh, why he wouldn't swear at me because I did have a couple of bad days, but he didn't really swear at me. Hmm. I think he was a little irritated and frustrated, but he didn't say anything. He's an extremely. He's very. His films are everything to me. Hmm. You know, it's. He puts everything into it. He lives and breathes it. He has so much passion for it. It's nearly impossible for everybody else who's working on the film to have that same level of passion. agreed and drive that sometimes creates these situations where you know that you can't expect but you sort of like you know so you snap you you angry and he's a lot of fun also he he jokes he pulls legs he cracks jokes he's uh, more approachable than people think he is hmm. uh, i used to like really go and chat with him and he also allows you to sort of improvise and bring your own creativity into it to some degree because mm. he also has a the larger picture in mind but so these are things that people usually don't say about him they only yeah. focus on the negatives you know and i feel that it's slightly yeah it's true like you know when he's angry he's really angry and he really screams and like i said that he's very <laughs> he innovative swear. or good at swearing he can swear yeah, yeah yeah i mean hindsight i mean when you're in the receiving end It's not very nice, yeah. but uh, when I think about some of the things that he said, I laugh at it. I was like, "That was funny." <laughs> <laughs> of course, retrospectively, I'm sure it's funny. Yeah, only. yeah, and I'm so glad that I was never at the receiving end of it. Did you figure out the chemistry between Ranveer and Deepika while you were on the sets of uh, Ramlila? During the second schedule, when we were in Udaipur, yes. Yeah. Uh, in the beginning, no. Hmm. See, this is my reading of the situation. I think he was very into her hmm. right from the beginning. and i could see that he really liked her he was attracted to her and yeah. all that i don't know this is the sense i had but nothing really was happening in the first schedule we were all together and we were shooting the songs and on that lahu mulag gaya we were shooting and some of the other scenes amazing songs think, thank you i have no i can't take anything <laughs> it's all mr bansali yeah so but uh, that's it it was like they would just come and they would do their scenes and they were good together uh, in the song and all that but when i went to udaipur and i saw them i was like yeah so this is like wow oh, i never saw this coming you know there was like literally it's like they're on each other's laps <laughs> i was like whoa i didn't see that coming you know i never thought that it would get to that yeah. i was like oh i think he likes her but i don't know if she is like really into him i wasn't sure but if men are persistent maybe, women even i don't know maybe he really wooed her yeah. like you know and uh, he had the drive to do that and yeah I like them both so I wish yeah. them well stay together guys <laughs> the pe- enough people put that pressure I'm sure on Sorry, all couples Sorry I'm joking couple. do whatever <laughs> Ajay you've done so much work on ODD and of course you've worked on films that have had theatrical releases as well What is the difference in the emotion or the anxiety that you feel pre-release like is it do you feel more anxious when yeah. it's a theatrical release Yeah compared Does to an ODD Yeah it's money how much unfortunately that's everybody measures how the worth of a film with how much money it's making yeah it's really unfortunate how it's impacted them what that story means to them what those characters mean to them is of little consequence even general audiences also see 
कितने की ओपनिंग लगी है एंड देन दे वांट टू डिसाइड वेदर दे वांट टू सी इट और नॉट दे मे सी अ फिल्म दैट्स हैड अ मैसिव ओपनिंग एंड दे सॉर्ट ऑफ काइंड ऑफ ट्रिक देमसेल्व्स टू लाइक इट आल्सो बिकॉज़ लाइक इफ इट इज डूइंग सो वेल देन इट मस्ट बी अ गुड फिल्म वी डोंट रियली दे डोंट रियली गेट इमोशनल अबाउट अबाउट फिल्म हाउसफुल टाइप्स See, they, these films have a right to exist, you know, because yeah. they are entertaining films. I'm not talking about that. I'm just yeah. saying how the reaction of the people, you know, to it. Uh, most of the people who talk about these figures have no idea how the business works. What's the split during the first week, second week, third week? Uh, how much is a film made? Uh, what is the uh, um, uh, the difference between net and gross and uh, profit sharing and things like that? They don't they don't really know. They just look at the figure and say, oh. this is a flop like i was i did, i was in a film called death in the ganj it was a small budget film brilliant it yes and it was reviewed and uh, loved by its audience it didn't have a wide release it had a very small release and uh, it's a financially successful film let me tell you how because it was made for less so the amount that you needed to recover to go go into profits was also much less so the pressure is less but the growth of the film was exceptional now when you look at it from the figures point of view it's not impressive at all so many people like disaster first day but you look at the first day and the second day it's a 100% jump hmm. and there's a 120% jump on the third day which means word of mouth is terrific hmm. even big films like big budget like blockbuster films don't get this kind of jump it's never 100% 120% that's a successful film yeah and i know it made money because i know it made money <laughs> We the producers you. are my friends. Yeah, I know. Yeah, so, but nobody, but people don't talk about that. Yeah. That it's a successful film. They love that film. They say it's a good film, a cheap picture. Hai. But flop, thi na? Hmm. No, it wasn't a flop, because they just don't understand the math the, of it. The math of it. They just look at the figure and come to a conclusion. Unfortunately, so that creates pressure. You want people to have a positive. Uh, opinion about your film because it's all perception based it's yeah. all subjective opinions how can you control subjective opinion by showing them a big figure and saying that oh we are successful incredible pressure incredible pressure bowel busting pressure <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> i love that too yeah, yeah yeah and the bigger the star you are the more the pressure hmm. i would imagine so yeah yeah i have known people breaking out into rashes and you know things like that because of the pressure Gulshan I wanted to ask you if it's just me or has anybody else also told you that you and Amit Saad look alike Some people have some people have and uh, I I now particularly with this hat also I think because he also owns a nice hat and we do and that's the reason why we were both cast in this series called Duranga as well Yeah and the second season of which which is going to come out soon there's more of him of course uh, as two of us Um I was once mistaken to be him in a hospital um Somebody said that oh, आपने सुल्तान में बहुत अच्छा किया था। I was like that's not me, that's Amit Saad. I had I used to be mistaken for uh, um, Siddharth Malhotra also. Not anymore. No, I'm a bit older. When I was a bit younger, in some angles we would look alike. Yeah. And even some filmmakers and directors who work with both of us also um, say this. And um, Kali Roy, my, uh, were my ex-wife saw. Uh, a photo a picture of him with yami gautam i think for some ice cream ad and she's like when did you do this i was like that's not me honey <laughs> that's sid manothra yeah He's now, a we, now man. we don't yeah very well, i was i took it I, really like i wish i was as handsome as him though You're but that's handsome. okay i'm happy with what i have <laughs> and sometimes i think sonakshi the first time she met me a long time ago before we worked actually uh did a double take on me she like oh, i thought you were siddharth manothra you know and i think some other actors also so some angles it was there but now that i have a beard and i'm also a bit older this used to happen when i was in my early to mid 30s so now it doesn't happen i think our, my face has changed a little bit as it rightfully does yeah. and should also sakib salim i get sometimes really Not anymore, that initially. i won't yeah. i don't know how though but then it's okay he's also a good looking man yeah so yeah know. of course Huma and he are both great actors also yeah and i'm not but i'm not sure that siddharth was very happy with the comparison <laughs> Sorry, Sid. You're definitely more handsome. Um, you know you've worked with some great female actors as well. Yeah. Um, of course you worked in fashion design also, and we love discussing, you know, women and you know what they stand for. Uh, we want women to be successful yeah. and liberated and all of that. 
as you've met these successful women have you ever walked into a room and felt intimidated by a woman yeah once i did uh i think it was a talent company they wanted to manage me and uh really early on 2011 uh so i walked into a room and there were like i think 16 women sitting there all like saying nice things about me and for some reason i got really petrified really <laughs> yeah yeah i was petrified not because they were, i don't think it's about the power they had it wasn't like that they were trying to make me feel nice but yeah. i was i felt hustled you know <laughs> i would think you would feel flattered yeah. no i wasn't i felt scared i was like they're hustling me <laughs> so that was it Yeah there are some women who are very strong personalities and sometimes they are scary they can be and it's it's totally okay hmm and um yeah women are capable of being extremely scary sometimes they are they can scare the shit out of you <laughs> sometimes you meet people they look at you a certain way and you're like whoa that's like very uncomfortable hmm. it's very uncomfortable case and sometimes they just don't understand and some fans also sometimes don't understand your privacy and there's no sense of propriety so they feel that because they like you so much they kind of almost can do and tell whatever hmm they want what has been your weirdest fan moment yeah like this like sometimes getting into the space where you feel like hey just, you know just distance please relax you yeah. know just like you know Yeah like uh, I know you like me that doesn't mean that like you know yeah. that you can do this you know that happens um somebody kind of forced themselves on me also once somebody I know but then yeah I didn't know what to do uh I kind of like weaseled my way out of it somehow That's stressful Yeah and it was a woman and it was like really like us I didn't see that coming and that was yeah so it can happen now it's, i mean it's so well it's water under the bridge i'm like these things are don't really bother me and then we've obviously talked about it and uh, with that person and that's matter is settled but yeah they can like uh, there were these really hairy situations where where women made me feel really uncomfortable and intimidated yeah hmm but uncomfortable and intimidated is different uncomfortable i think is quite negative intimidated is like It's also negative. Huh. Yeah. Somebody who's scary, like you're like you're scared of them. Yeah. But it can also be like a positive scary like oh I I'm enamored by it almost. Yeah, sure, but that's not intimidating. That's a strong attractive personality, somebody who's really sure of themselves and uh, confident and there's a almost like there's a light inside them. Yeah, that can be really attractive and desirable. Hmm. You like to be am- among such people. Yeah. You know? I agree. Like you know, naturally, like you know, they they're signif they they show like you know leadership qualities and things like that. So those are there. I I think the first time I met Pooja Pooja, but she's vibrant, really yeah. self confident, and she's a big personality. And she has a big personality. Yeah. Her personality will hit you like you know, twenty five feet away. Yeah. Like, wow. And she's all of that. She's great fun. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So. we ask this question to all of our guests and we of course want to ask you as well that you have a very very busy life we know you've had a very busy day today as well yeah today pretty busy yeah yeah how do you unwind after hours how do you relax um uh try and get as much sleep as possible hmm i really value good sleep sound sleep uh, it's not really the amount of hours it's the amount of relaxation deep and sleep deep sleep yeah like relaxing your jaw relaxing your tongue and then just getting into a state where everything is relaxed and sometimes i i, I tend to carry a lot of uh, tension in my up sh- shoulders my neck and my jaw i've seen so, your chiropractor videos <laughs> i don't <laughs> go to him that often now but it really helped at that point of time yeah. anyway so try and get really good quality sleep um which also means that the surface and, anyway so that's not really unwinding so um i watch a lot of youtube and many times that uh, i watch things that are very relaxing like people making things with their hands like they are making a pair of shoes or they're carving something and these are like really long videos where don't they don't really speak much yeah or like artisans making a clay pot and this is like a you know 56 minute video and it really relaxes me and it's also they're making nice things so you mm. just look at the details and all that 
and that also kind of unwinds and many times are just like i'm ready to fall asleep after some time you watch so many uh, youtube videos but you said you don't watch your own movies why i consciously i try to i can be unnecessarily critical about things you know mm. and uh, that's also pressure on myself and also on other people because sometimes i'm conscious that i might say something critical of the film so i need to be sufficiently detached with it so i need some time also you don't want the producers to hear it. i don't want anybody to hear it. like sometimes i don't even want to hear criticism for myself like yeah. I'm, i'm like I'm like dude you're being really hard on yourself yeah. you know yeah yeah you want to do well but don't 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 like murder yourself so i just want to give sufficient amount of time and I, in my experience when i see films after a while sometimes after a year or something i don't have much problem i'm able to enjoy them better Hmm. Because it stopped bothering me. I'm detached from it. Like I don't care. I'm in it. Yeah. So even if it had some inadequacies, or if I felt this could have been better, that could have been better. Whether it's to do with me, my performance, or anything else, technical aspects of the film, or plot line, or anything like that, it bothers me less, or not at all. So I'm able to enjoy it. So I think with practice, I I think the time will be reduced to much shorter. But hmm. I try and avoid. Sometimes you can't because you're at a screening, you're promoting your film, you're selling your film. so part of that is also watching it with other people hmm. so then i watch it how annoying are film promotions or show not promotions? at all i have lots of fun yeah? i am yeah i'm sitting here for the first time i'm meeting you right now I, uh, so you meet people like this and you have conversations with them uh, you get to know so certain things about people and uh, people also ask you some interesting questions and sometimes they ask you the same question but that's the part of the job yeah. you know how can i make it interesting for myself so If this conversation is interesting for myself, perhaps it will be interesting for somebody who who is listening to me. Yeah, agreed. It's part of the job, you know. Yeah, but you know, like I feel like as an actor, when you're promoting a film or a show, it's the same thing. Like, how did you feel about your character? Yeah. What was the process like? So oh, I make it up sometimes. I make up all kinds of nonsense sometimes. For That's example, give us an example of one thing you made up. Like uh, some somebody told me, like uh, I was just the other day, and then like. Uh, Um, oh, you're shooting Ulaj with uh, Janvi Kapoor. Like, you know, how was that experience? I was like, Janvi, who? Sorry, I'm like Janvi. I thought I was doing this film with Alia. You know, <laughs> 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 Janvi Kapoor. Are you sure Janvi Kapoor in this film? Really? Hmm. Oh man, you know, it's like, <laughs> of course, I'm exaggerating yeah. and being ridiculous. But then, you know, I just, I don't know. It's just like I'm being funny and I'm being stupid and ridiculous. And I, I'm Manvi was right. Yeah. So you mentioned Ulaj and tell us what else we can look forward to with you. I'm still filming Ulaj yeah. and uh, I still have one portion uh, left to shoot for it. Uh, I mean the Delhi schedule got washed out. We couldn't shoot here at all. So now I have Guns and Gulabs coming up. Uh, Rajan DK have made that. Love love everything yeah, they do. Yeah, yeah, it's I love working with them. A uh, lot of creative freedom they give to interpret your part and uh, everything about the character right from costumes to props and scenes and everything like that. It's a wonderful collaborative experience. It's the second time I'm working with them, and uh, I have Duranga season two coming also, which very is very exciting. Yeah, yeah. Which Duranga has his own fan base, and uh, Drashti Dami fans are also really excited about it. And Amit also has like a a proper leading part in it this time. So uh, I think it should be interesting. And the story, of course, where we left off, it really progresses, and it's an emotional journey for us this time. So looking forward to that, and I'm looking forward to like promoting all of that. Really, I I love promotion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Unless I get until I get tired, which is normal. Yeah. If people get tired, then then you are tired. You know? Yeah. I'm not tired. Like right now, I feel okay. I haven't eaten anything since last evening, by the way. But we offered to feed you. No, but I eat once a day, so this is my preferred way of eating. Mm. Now I'll go eat and and pass out. Pass out. Okay, done. Okay, so last before we end our show, we usually play a game with our guest, uh, which we customize to the guest. So your game is called Movie for a Mood. So we'll give you a mood and any movie that comes to mind. You please tell us what you'd watch. Okay, okay. okay. So if you're sad or you know like post breakup, you're feeling upset. What movie would you watch? It's not a movie actually. Hmm. It's a series. Can I just? Yeah. Say? It's a television series from the from the eighties. Please. Black Adder. I have it, no clue what that is. It gets me la laughing. I every time it gets me. It has Rowan Atkinson. It's one. It's a classic British comedy. Hmm. Black Adder. Like what? I know that it never fails. It's a tried and tested thing with with me. When I'm down and I need to be cheered up, I watch episodes of Blackadder. Okay. If you've had a long tiring day, 
again it's not a movie chalega it's a youtube video of some japanese uncle making a pot or something <laughs> <laughs> quietly it's really relaxing. relaxing yeah it's really something really beautiful but slow and not forced you know hmm so such, such things but le- let me see if i can think of a movie that can be uh, that can be very relaxing and rubbish at this game <laughs> Nee but we we'll accept your answer na the yeah, video yeah. one Next question Next question is once you finish an intense I mean for schedule. a guy who loves cinema this is not really going well you know yeah. I'm talking about YouTube It's okay yeah. it's okay we're not judging Once you finish an intense schedule let's say like ghost stories Yeah what would you watch after that Something that's like an absolute opposite of that like a comedy or something like that Yeah what is your favorite comedy film You know I it's not really a popular film but there's a film with Bill Murray The Man Who Knew Too Little Hmm I That's hilarious. I think it really dirty rotten scoundrels. Give us something films. in Hindi. In Hindi, Hera uh, Peri Part One. Yeah, I agree. Every Classic. time, like yeah. really, like it's the it's just it's silly, it's stupid, but like that's why we love yeah. it. Yeah, it's just it's watchable. Like you can rewatch it like a thousand times. I love Welcome gets, also. I think that's also very silly. Yeah, but it's fun. nice. But then I think my go-to would be like Hera Peri. Yeah, agreed. Okay, when uh, or Bade Mia, Chote Mia. Oh, बहुत साल से नहीं देखी मैंने वो. That's also like Govinda. There was a phase of Govinda. I was totally like into all his films, man. Hmm. I was really like, I called you man, but then yeah. That's so, okay. It's like, Are you as I good feel, a dancer? No, I feel comfortable, so that's why I call you man. Yeah. Yeah. So that's credit to you. No, I'm not a dance. I like dancing, but I'm not a dancer. Hmm. I have to really work hard to sort of learn the steps. So we won't see you like doing like a full. You may, but then I don't have any aspirations to be like this dancing leading man or anything yeah. like that. But if I have to do it. I have to put in the work. I need rehearsal time. I need to learn all the dance, and you can't change it on the last day. Ki ha? Yeah. No, this step is not happening without this. No, 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 no. Jo sikha hoy karna. Ah. ठीक है. अच्छा, if you're feeling romantic, if you're on date and you're trying to impress someone with your movie choice, so just like a, you're feeling romantic, like Netflix and chill vibe. Stanley and Iris, I think it's a wonderful film. Again, it has uh, Robert De Niro, so. I think it's a great film about a man who can't read and write and a woman they fall in love. She teaches him how to. Nice. And if you're feeling lazy and you just don't want to think and it's just like nothing intellectual. I think it'll be in the same genre as the Bade Mia Chote Mia. I think so too. I think so too. But I'm trying to think of uh, something that I did recently because I've not felt like this in a long time. And I want to not say YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would say some reality TV. I don't watch reality TV. Oh, you Unless should. Unless it has anything to do with talent, you know. I like reality television where people are actually they need skill, and I have a bit of a. It's a my personal issue. It's very personal. I'm not trying to talk down on these shows. I don't think they're entertainment. If you don't have any skill that you're showing. Have you seen Love Is Blind? No, I have not. It seen is it. very entertaining. No, it may be so, but yeah. then if they're not really showing any skill, or if it's fiction, if if Love Is One Blind was totally fiction, then I'd be totally cool with that. Got it. Then it would be uh, I would watch that. Uh, what would be something? What was your question again? If you're feeling lazy and you don't want to think hard and just watch something to unwind and nothing that's intellectual. I think any of those Govinda films from say 1993 to 1998. मैं तो रस्ते से जा रहा था वाला. Yeah, they all fall in this category because they're terribly entertaining. Yeah, hero number really one. Do. And yeah, I don't. You don't really have to follow the plot or do this or do that. You can just sit back, relax, have a good laugh, and not really like you know try and remember that this happened, that happened. Because almost all of those comedy scenes are like set pieces. You can enjoy mm. them like on their own, you know. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I think yeah those. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. Fun. I also used to enjoy Govinda movies. Yeah, yeah, they're a whole lot of. Fun, yeah. Right? yeah, but now when I watch you them, there's no consent, ka koi concept nahi hai. Really, really, the problems are there. Haan. Of course, they are there, and you have to like we have to be conscious as we learn things. As we we didn't know any better, but yeah. since we know better now, we we do get conscious. But we also look at it from the perspective of it being, uh, uh, you know, represent. Uh, uh, rep- It was representing the time that uh, yeah. they were in. Yeah. So we'll there are Lady L J also is like really like in the train the whole thing with the book. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. I agree. Yeah, it's very like, really problematic. Yeah. Yeah. But we also forgive it because at some point we also understand that that was not yeah. the intention yeah. of the people to do it. Yeah. 
and it's also like you know hyper particularly with govinda range it's like really out there over the top comedies yeah. you know yeah so and it it's a lot of fun and yeah. um, it's okay and we don't need to really bash them or judge them because they were really a long while back yeah. and even they have really progressed from there like you know, yeah they don't make the same films anymore i agree i agree and i think that and i have a theory about govinda huh. that he was the first proper dancing hero yeah first proper like who had the really like elite skill level for a dancer that elite is true. dancer there were good dancers before that like mithun chakravarti is a pretty good dancer but sorry but then i don't think he's elite level like yeah. i think govinda is like really like govinda ritik like these are like elite level dancing yeah. heroes shayad also was damn yeah yeah since then like yeah. he was the first and i yeah. think after that it became a benchmark that you have to be a really really good dancer there are a lot of them varun shayad ranbir ranveer um uh, tiger the, the pff, exceptional like elite level like dancers yeah. ritik of course of course he's ritik. the god of dance of course madhuri dikshit it was the women before like yeah. there, there were some really exceptional like uh, elite level dancers but i think govinda was the first proper the dancing hero yeah proper dancing hero no i agree i i remember i was watching um I was with my mom and we were going to watch a uh, Govinda film and it was in the space of the single screen. Yeah. Uh and I remember we bought tickets in black. She and I went how to watch. How much did you pay for them? I didn't pay. I was a kid. So I'm oh. going to have to ask her how much she But paid. But you're loaded, no. So you I'm <laughs> sure you don't remember. Like pata nahi kitne paise the yo te sab yaad nahi rehta. Nahi, wo wo din nahi aaya hai abhi. But hopefully soon. But thank you Gulshan. This has been such a pleasure. I've had Uh, such a blast chatting with you thank you for coming my pleasure, my pleasure. and we look awesome. forward to all the new things that you're thank doing thank you so much thank and you and the really. new releases and we'll be rooting for you thank you for rooting for me thank you for making me feel comfortable thank you for giving me an opportunity to have an amazing conversation uh great thank you <laughs> pleasure was all mine mine too thank you looking forward to maybe we can another time we can uh, yeah, you know have another conversation or something else of course whenever you know how to get in touch i'm glad to be useful yeah thanks